starting. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship this beautiful morning that God has created. Uh, it is Holy Humor Sunday. Uh, we're happy to have you here with us. Uh, we'll probably share a few jokes throughout the course of, of today, but uh, we have some announcements uh, to begin with first. Uh, again, one link is all you need for worship. That link is located in your Salem happenings. Uh, so just keep coming back to it week in, week out, and, and also to share that with your friends and family who may not be familiar with Salem and invite them to join in. Uh, there's a good chance that, that they might not have a, a home church to wander into or even a Zoom link as well. So extend the invitation. That always helps. Check-in and prayer will resume tomorrow at 10 a.m. That's Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, all on 10 a.m. There's a Zoom link, of course, in your Salem happenings. I want to say thank you to all who have brought food to feed those who are hungry at Friday's food drive. From what I understand, it was another great and successful event. Don't forget about a prayer shawl meeting, too, on Zoom Tuesdays at 10 a.m. Cindy, if you've got something to say about that, too, if the weather is nicer and if you want to meet in the parking lot, is that still something you are considering? Yes, and we'll let you know week <laughs> to week. Yes. <laughs> so just stay tuned. Cindy will we'll make that announcement uh, when it comes time. Uh, Drop-off times at Salem Church today for the Oakland County Foster Closet is 3 to 5 p.m. today at Salem. If you have some of these items that you see on your screen, drop them off at Salem here between 3 and 5, and they'll be collecting them today. And also, I want to invite you to stay uh, on Zoom after our virtual coffee hour uh, to learn a little bit more about the Salem Native Plant Project. Uh, Beth will lead us through a, a conversation and a presentation about it, um, but it's part of our commitment to God's creation, the environment around us. So we hope that you stay tuned uh, after our virtual coffee hour to hear a little bit more about um, that native plant project. <clears throat> uh, one last thing here before we enter into music uh, to center ourselves for, for today is 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 this, uh, who was the first tennis player in the Bible? Hearing no answers, it was Joseph because he served in Pharaoh's court. With that, I'm gonna mute myself from now. <laughs>
Life has been revealed to us this Easter season. Gather once more to testify to life. We declare to each other what we have experienced. In community, we find the life God intends. Early believers were of one heart and soul. We too are called to find common ground in Christ. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. Peace be with you as we celebrate resurrection. Christ is with us to renew our faith. We are here to testify to God's grace. We will share our story and ourselves. You pour out upon us the oil of gladness, gracious God, as we gather in the name of our risen Savior. You have given us the word of life. We have seen and heard your greatest of all gifts and testify to that experience by our present here, presence here. Let Jesus Christ be known among us in our conversation and in our prayers. May our thoughts center on the message that light has come to chase away shadows. Community has been born to remove our isolation. Joy has been heaped upon us that we might share it with the world. Amen. Our first lesson today is from the book of Psalms and it's Psalm 133. Standing one week beyond the joyful hope of an empty tomb, it's hard to argue with the psalmist's central theme how very good and pleasant it is when we live when when kindred live together in unity. The other two verses, however, speak of the messiness of Easter and the rarity of it all. Anointing with oil is messy, and the life-giving dew falling on the mountains of Zion isn't your everyday meteorological event. Easter brings unity in the rarities and the messiness of life. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. It's like the precious oil on the head, running down upon the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down over the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord ordained his blessing, life forevermore. Our second reading is from the New Testament, Acts chapter four, verses 32 through 37. The book of Acts carries a narrative of the beginning of the church, from the story of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost to the continual adding of members to faith over and over again. 
This new church is one that is built on diversity and also on poverty. The message of unity that services from both diversity and poverty is one narrative our world could stand to hear again and again. Now the whole group of those who believe were of one heart and soul and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the feet of the apostles and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. This ends the second lesson. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven Spoke your name into the night And through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom? Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And bear my shame The cross has spoken I am forgiven The King of kings Calls me his own Beautiful Savior
Our reflection reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. Listen now to the word of God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of many, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although, although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. Friends, would you pray with me? Gracious God, breathe into us your spirit, we pray. That the words from my mouth and the meditations of my heart may be wholly acceptable to you and to find a home in the hearts of these, your beloved. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to begin this morning's reflection with a question that will prayerfully ignite more questions. Where was Solomon's temple located? On the side of his head. Well, on this Holy Humor Sunday, I pray that those questions that have may have been ignited may only be about pastoral humor integrity. Doubting Thomas is what we're talking about this morning. One honest question he utters, one moment of being unsure, and this one of the 12 has forever earned the moniker Doubting as if his question, his moment of unsteady faith, defines him forever and ever. (laughs) That's unfortunate. There's a song I fell in love with after seeing a a group perform uh, a concert at Meyer Gardens in Grand Rapids. Uh, The the name of the band is called Nickel Creek. If you're not familiar with them, It's a a contemporary bluegrass uh, band uh, led by frontman singer and extraordinary mandolin player, Chris Thiel, uh, and and siblings, Sarah and Sean Watkins on violin and acoustic guitar, respectively, uh, that also provide background vocals, harmonies that are just extraordinary. The song is called Fitting Our Theme Today, Doubting Thomas. Uh, And I I pray that you will allow me a moment here to play this song for you all. This is Doubting Thomas. What will be left when I've drawn my last breath? Besides the folks I've met, the folks who know me. 
Will I discover a soul saving love or just dirt above and below me? I'm a doubting Thomas. I took a promise, but I do not feel safe. Oh, me of little faith. Sometimes I pray for a slap in the face. Then I beg to be spared, cause I'm a coward. If there's a master of death, I'll bet he's holding his breath. As I show the blind and tell the deaf about his power. I'm a doubting Thomas. I can't keep my promises, cause I don't know what's safe. Oh, me of little faith. Can I be used to help others find truth? When I'm scared, I'll find proof that it's a lie. Can I be led down a trail dropping breadcrumbs that prove I'm now ready to die? Please give me time to decipher the signs. Please forgive me for time that I've wasted. I'm a doubting Thomas. I'll take your promise, though I know nothing safe. Oh, me of little faith. Within the lyrics of, of that song, I often find myself. It's an awkward place to land as an ordained pastor who, who had to run through a, a battery of psychological exams, write an ordination paper, which is just a fancy way of saying a personal statement of faith. And that statement of faith, of course, is usually founded uh, uh, on, uh, let's say, the, the basket in which we place all of our faithful eggs, our marks of faith, everything we believe that is true. What if that foundation, the marks of our faith, like the parables we've learned long ago, are made of shifting sand beneath our feet? What if our footing is unstable. What if, like Thomas, we come to places of doubt? Will we too be made into eternal doubting nicknames? Will there be a, a hesitant Harry, a skeptical Steve, a distrustful Debbie, a suspicious Susie, an apprehensive Aaron, a second guessing Greg? Perhaps there will be but I don't believe that's a bad thing. I don't believe doubting Thomas is terribly negative in the bigger picture. As a matter of fact, I believe moments of little faith, oh me of little faith, lead to moments of greater faith. I tend to believe that Thomas's nickname may be better, perhaps as pragmatic Thomas, rational Thomas, Transformed Thomas. I mean, 
What a transformative experience to place your hands in or near the wounds of the risen Christ. Now that's a testimony to tell to your friends. I do not believe doubt defines one faith. I believe it strengthens it. Good questions may lead to more questions, better questions, and they may lead to, to stronger faith. I believe that is as it should be. I enjoyed listening to the supporting scripture this morning and the Psalms, the, the messiness of life as you listened. And the post-Pentecost stories of the establishment of Ecclesia, the gathered community as the church, not, not the, the brick and mortar church, the capital C community church in which a people gave all they could for a diverse community, creating equity among those who were gathered. It was, in a sense, an early recorded economy of democratic socialism in a community gathered in faith. Now, if I have any cause for concern in matters of faith, it is over the person that is so certain, so self-assured, so overly confident that God or Jesus or the divine spirit works in such specific ways that there can be no arguing or debate. Faith to that person may be like that box that we try to fit all of our knowledge into, to cram all of God into this little space. I don't think it works. I rely on the notion that it's been said not to give God instructions, but just to simply show up for duty. Honestly, it's a safe place to exist. That box, no challenges. For your self-assuredness has created a realm of no worry for all is right in that comfy little space. There's no such thing then that can shake one off of a solid foundation of religious facts that have been come to know. But I love that this text from John, our story of prove it, Jesus, comes to us this day on Rissus Piscalis, Latin translated as the Easter laugh, or as we call it, Holy Humor Sunday. It is a way that God shows us we can laugh at ourselves. The final laugh is God's laugh over death, as in a final destination, as we tend to think of it. Death has been defeated. The joy of life lives on and on and on. I read a funny story that goes like this. You know, the early morning hours of the empty tomb was a story brought to men by women. And from that point, men wrote it down, thereby creating the first pages of mansplaining. I also find it funny that most of our sacred texts were indeed written and passed down from generation to generation. Bye, guys. And I also find it funny that if you read the Bible front to back, that there are more than 630. 30 critical grammatical and timeline errors in our scriptures. Our faith isn't defined by how sure we are, how confident we are about whatever knowledge we've gleaned over the years about God. To a point, I believe uh, this formation of faith has been detrimental to the community of Christ followers or to any community of faith following a spiritual center such as Christianity's Christ. A recent Gallup poll showed that since the year 2000, those choosing to identify to a specific religion has decreased more than 20 points in the last 20 years. In the year 2000, the percentage of Americans identifying with faith was roughly 67%. In 2020, that percentage dropped to 47%. The first time in the history of Gallup polls that has fallen below 50%. Our faith is better defined, especially in this day and age, by our actions and willingness to allow for questions. 
doubts, uncertainty. And not to be ostracized by coming before God and asking questions, but to be embraced and loved. You know, the popular song, they'll know we are Christians by our love. I believe that the joke is on Christianity if we continue to preach certainty of faith rather than offering a safe place to land for those still wondering. The punchline is that the mainline denominational churches are shrinking. More than 200 churches close their doors every week. But yet so many more people are finding spiritual but not religious is their pathway to God. A pathway that I thought for a long time as an ordained pastor wasn't viable. But my questioning, my deconstruction of my own beliefs, it brought me to a point where I believe it is. That tells me that faith will undoubtedly carry on, aside from what I know, but in other ways that we're just not used to. God will indeed have the last laugh. I want to leave you this morning with a thought that questions, doubts, wonder, are all welcome as marks of faith. I believe the church, the capital C, the gathered community of God-loving folks would benefit from asking more questions, a lot more questions. In the name of the risen Christ, may you have doubts and may you seek answers. Amen and amen. Friends, let us take some time to breathe in the spirit of God and center ourselves in prayer. Let's take a few moments to lift our own prayers in silence to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving creator, breathe into us and allow us to belly laugh your spirit. Allow us to revel in the mystery of creation. Explore and wonder, ask questions about life that surrounds us. Provide for us, O oh God, answers. Answers not to create self-assuredness, but to generate more wonder. Allow us to wonder with your eyes at all that is around us. To come to love and admire the mysteries and to lift those that you call us to lift. As a gathered community, O oh God, breathe into us your spirit this day, that we might be the community, that we may be the community, that exemplifies your love through our collective voice, our actions, our hands in the, in the soil, our feet walking your words into dark places, our hands feeding those starving for your spirit and much more. We give you thanks and praise for the abundance of blessings you have bestowed upon us. And now we pray through your guidance and will that we use those gifts 
to bring forth mission and ministry, to create heaven here on your creation, that we may all be one, singing in harmony with one another, the great chorus that Jesus Christ taught us to pray together, saying, our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, your gifts to the church is an act of worship and praise to God, your creator. This day we give thanks and praise for those continued gifts to the mission and ministry of Salem, to how you give both of your finances and to how you participate in those opportunities of great faith by providing for others, food drives, clothing banks, and so much more. Let us pray together to give thanks and dedicate these gifts to God's work. Let us pray. We offer to you our common stewardship, loving God. We want to be faithful in meeting one another's needs and in serving the world in Christ's name. The gifts we bring today will not mark an end to our giving. We sense that you are sending us, as Jesus was sent, to share light with the world. Thus, we dedicate our time and effort as a further offering. May life and faith be extended to many through us. Amen.
Beloved, you are sent into the world as a sign of God's love. Go forth, carrying God's peace to all you meet. We will live in unity with our kindred. We will listen and speak as God guides us. You are commissioned as a bearer of God's forgiveness. Announce, announce good news, sharing your testimony. It will be our joy to reconcile others to God. We will extend to them the fellowship of light. The grace of Jesus Christ has been poured out on you. God ordains a blessing for you, life evermore. Our fears are unlocked. Our faith is renewed. We will invite our neighbors to share the joy. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Saved a wretch like me I once was lost But now I'm found Was blind But now I see Was grace that taught my heart to fear, raised by fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. My chains are gone. I've been set free I got my Savior Has ransomed me And like a flood His mercy reigns Unending love Amazing grace Lord has promised good to me. It's worth my hope secures. He will my shield and portion me. His love, his life endures. My chains are gone. Set free by God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns on ending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free. Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing
Beloved, go in the grace and peace, the spirit of Jesus Christ. Go, be sent by God. Amen and amen.